Hello and welcome inside our award-winning locker room show sponsored by your Hampton Road Chevy dealers. I am Adam Winkler. Megan Plain has the night off. As we continue to navigate this sports standstill, our locker room shows have evolved into follow-up Fridays. We will rebroadcast feature stories from years past and follow up with the subject or subjects in the piece for a present day update. Tonight, not necessarily a follow-up, more of a celebration. We'll explain in a couple minutes after you watch our feature story on Newport News native Michael Vick, originally aired on the eve of Super Bowl 53 from Atlanta. When cruising through Atlanta, you're almost as likely to see someone wearing Michael Vick's number seven Falcons jersey as you are to spot a Coca-Cola sign on a street named Peachtree. I haven't played here in, you know, 10, 12 years, and you still get that type of warm reception. It is, it's something that you'll never forget. Vic, who rewrote the Atlanta Falcons record books after the team used the number one overall pick in the 2001 NFL Draft to select the quarterback, admits Atlanta helped put him on the map. But for the Newport News native, all roads lead home to Virginia. Home is home, and uh, every time I have a chance to go back, uh, you know, I appreciate it. You know, my family's still there, my mom, my sisters, and. You know, I appreciate them dearly and I appreciate their patience with me not being able to be there as much as they, they would like me to. Um, but, you know, that's where I grew up. That's where all my roots were, were started and, and uh, that's where my dream began. And uh, without, you know, the city of Newport News, without the state of Virginia, without all the supporters, uh, you know, there will be no, you know, Michael Vick. Vick says Newport News is where the dream started. It's also where defenses first figured out he was a nightmare to try and stop. I made some plays in this game, and my coach told me afterwards he knew that I would make it to the National Football League. Just At that because, point? Yeah. Just because of the way I played. Oh, man. Just to see myself drop back, throw a touchdown pass to one of my best friends, Kevin Stanley, was amazing. As Vic watches highlights of his days playing for Warwick High School, he's looking at a guy many recruiters looked at as the second best prospect on the peninsula. Hampton High's Ronald Curry, also a quarterback, led his team to three straight state championships. Yeah, that's what happened with Virginia Tech. They, they knew they had no shot at Ronald Curry, so they was like, we're going for the next best thing. <laughs> Curry went to the University of North Carolina. Vic ended up in the Virginia Tech Sports Hall of Fame. Responsible for the two most exciting seasons in program history, Michael led the Hokies to their first national title game appearance in 1999. But it's another title game, the 2004 NFC Championship, Vic's fourth season in the NFL, that gave him his first bite of success and still leaves a bitter taste today. You know, probably one of the biggest disappointments was you know, not getting back to NFC or AFC championship game when I played, uh, you know, that's what you play the game for. You want to have a chance to play in a big game. And um, I got there so easy in 2004 that I thought I would get back and I never got back. This week, he's part of the biggest game on the globe, albeit as an analyst for Fox Sports. And as the world sets its sights on Super Bowl 53 and the city of Atlanta, one of the greatest athletes to ever call the ATL home never loses sight of his home. What do you have to say to the, to the guys in the 757 who might be wondering if, if they can get out, if they can make something of themselves? Well, you look around the, the 757 and you see guys who have made it out. You can't do it on your own. So, you know, invite somebody into your life. Um, you know, open up a little bit and, and uh, you know, don't feel like you're always being vulnerable. All right, we said today is a celebration. Well, it's Michael Vick's 40th birthday. Happy 4-0 to the most electrifying quarterback the NFL had ever seen. Vick set records that are only now being broken by reigning NFL most valuable player, Lamar Jackson. But Vick's football story certainly has to include a chapter on the two seasons he missed while serving time in prison for his role in a dogfighting operation. Earlier this year, Vick, still working for Fox Sports, spoke at several historically black colleges and universities on what he called the empowerment tour. During his speeches, Vic shared transparent details about all areas of his life, education, prison, and his present day work as an advocate for animal rights. Happy birthday, Michael Vick. 
you certainly change the game. That'll do it for this follow-up Friday edition of our Locker Room Show. For Megan Plain and everyone behind the scenes who helped make this one happen, I'm Adam Winkler. What do you say we do it again next week? News 3 at 11 returns with a final check on your forecast after this timeout.